I'm going to show you every single skill from the Flagellant in Darkest Dungeon 2, and I'm going to show you how each and every single one of the paths that the Flagellant can take affects those skills. So we're going to go ahead and start with his default path, the Wanderer, and we're going to start with his first skill, which is Punish. So this is his basic attack. He can hit an enemy, and it'll do decent damage and also apply decent Blight. It can also combo off of a combo token to have a higher chance of applying that Blight. This is Fester. It's a corpse clear. It removes a single corpse, and it will apply Blight to targets that are around that corpse. Then we have Deathless, where he sacrifices some of his own HP to heal an ally. Endure, where he pulls stress away from an ally and onto himself. Lash's Gift, where it is a, it's a self-heal. He can only pop it when he's below 50% HP, but it will also give an ally some buffs and potentially remove some debuffs. His Acid Rain ability hits the back two targets for a decent amount of damage and pretty good blight. More and more is his Taunt move, and whenever he gets hit after casting this move, he'll get more stacks of that plus buff, and at the end of his next turn, he'll get healed a pretty nice amount. 10% per stack for the first one, and 15% per stack for the upgraded one. Suffer allows him to absorb bleed, blight, and burn from an ally and onto himself. And if you have the upgraded version, it'll also cure those DOTs the next turn. Sepsis is really strong. When he's below 50% HP, he can use this and it gives him a really strong self heal, does really good damage and blight, and it can also combo off of a combo token, but it does have a cooldown and limited uses. Undying allows him to sacrifice some HP to apply a regen to an ally. Necrosis is a really cool ability. It allows him to hit everybody on the enemy team that has blight whenever he uses this ability. So if they're all poisoned, he will hit all of them at the same time. It does decent damage. It does not remove the blight and he'll also heal 5% for every enemy hit. Now to the next path, we're going to look at Maniac. This only affects four skills, Punish, Acid Rain, Sepsis, and Lash's Gift. So let's see how those change. So we have Punish right here. You can see now the blight is less and it can no longer combo off of a combo token, but now there's a knockback and the upgraded version does two knockback and it actually applies a combo token. Lash's Gift, as you can see, still does a nice self heal, but instead of giving buffs to an ally, it can actually steal all negative tokens from an ally and even steal a combo token on the upgraded version. Then we have Acid Rain. Instead of applying Blight, it no longer applies Blight at all. It applies potentially weakness and a chance at a combo token. And then we have Sepsis, where now he can actually transfer all of his negative tokens and combo token for the upgraded version to an enemy when he casts this, in addition to healing himself a bunch. So that's really cool. It also ignores Blind. On to the next path, we're going to take a look at Exanimate. This one is my favorite. This is the high damage path. It's the same four abilities that get affected. So Punish, what's unique about the Exanimate path, you can see if his HP is less than 50%, it adds an additional two Blight of damage. So he could potentially do a five Blight every time he hits someone in addition to the four to eight damage on the upgraded version. Also, he can reach out to position three with this move. Lash's Gift, you can see the heal is much less and it doesn't help an ally anymore. He only buffs himself. He can give himself strength. Crit token, super dodge, remove all negative tokens and remove combo tokens. Acid Rain, just like with his Punish, move, if he's below half health, it can apply two extra blights. So you could potentially apply five blight to two of the backline targets at the same time. That's crazy. And then sepsis, this one you could argue is weaker. Instead of doing a set amount of damage and blight, it actually does the full damage of whatever the blight on the target would tick to. Like if all the turns played out and it expired, it's like cause of death for the plague doctor. And it will heal you specifically to 45%. Let me be clear. It doesn't heal you 45% HP. It heals you to 45% HP. Now why does it do that? To keep you under the 50% threshold so that you still get the damage bonus for Punish and Acid Rain. And then finally, the last path, Scourge. This is a more supportive one. This changes different abilities. It changes Sepsis, Deathless, Suffer, and Lash's Gift. Here's Lash's Gift. You can see he applies a one horror to himself and he removes Blight, Burning, and Bleed. And the upgraded version allows him to get more resistance for each one removed. And then Sepsis, you can see this one can do the full remaining Blight on the target as damage. So just like the Exanimate one, However, it won't actually remove the Blight if the target has a combo token, but it won't heal you at all. There's no heal associated with this version. Then we have Deathless. He no longer takes self-damage from this. He heals himself potentially 50% HP and heals a target 35% HP. So that's a massive heal. And then we have Suffer. This one makes it so that if a ally is burning Blight or bleeding, he can steal those conditions and he can even steal Horror on top of that, but he'll also get death blow Resistance and those conditions will get cured the following turn just like before. And that's pretty much it for the flagellant. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to help. And let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see. Like and subscribe. It helps out a lot. I'll see you later. Good luck on your runs.